Hello, I'm Paul Baker, founder of Airway Simulation Limited and developer of the awesome bronchoscopy simulator. I'm also an anesthesiologist with a special interest in management of the difficult airway and in particular, the pediatric difficult airway. Today, I'm going to take you to the awesome bronchoscopy pediatric module. Let's have a look at our uh, screen and I can show you some of the details. So this is the view you get when you open up the simulator and you can see Awesome Freestyle and Awesome Lab. And we'll start today at Awesome Freestyle. And there's a number of options that you could choose, but we're going to today deal with the pediatric module. And I'm going to choose Laryngomalacia as a, an example. So we'll start the scenario. Wait for that to load. It only takes a few seconds. And in the meantime, you can look at clinical notes and some teaching points. Now, one thing I want to mention before we start going through this um, baby with the bronchoscope, a couple of basic airway points. They are to maintain oxygenation and avoid trauma. So built into the simulator is a, an oxygen supply and it's monitored with a pulse oximeter. That can be activated by clicking on the button on the top right corner there, or you can use button three on your handset. We also uh, record collisions as a, an indicator of accuracy of movements through the airway. And there's a number of metrics that you'll see starting to move as soon as we go within the airway and they're up on the right hand corner. They record distance, rotation, direction changes, speed and tissue collisions. Now you can see this baby already has a superglottic airway placed in their airway and that's sitting from the mouth down towards the larynx with the opening just above the vocal cords. And at the proximal end is a swivel connector. That's that yellow device and it has a diaphragm with a hole through which I'm going to introduce the bronchoscope. So here we go, we're going into the swivel connector and now I'm inside the superglottic airway moving down towards the distal end. Right, now there's the exit from the supraglottic airway. I'm going to slightly flex up with the tip of the bronchoscope and right in front of me is the larynx. Now already we can see some interesting anatomical features here. First of all, there's a very large, floppy, soft looking epiglottis that's moving with respiration and it's moving downwards towards the vocal cords. And we would call that uh, a baby's type of epiglottis an omega shape. And that is because of the tethering caused bilaterally by short airy epiglottic folds, which bring the edges in creating that omega shape. When I go a little bit further, we can see the arotenoid cartilages. They're those two bulky cartilages looking at us there in the midline. And beyond that, there's a bit of a glimpse of the vocal cords. Now, this baby has laryngomalacia. It's a very common condition seen in newborn babies, and it reflects immaturity of the larynx. And it comes in three degrees of severity. But this is a type one that's the mildest of the three. And it's characterized by infolding of the aeroepiglottic folds, and you can see those arotenoids collapsing in towards the vocal cords with every breath. So I'm going to move my bronchoscope now over the top of the arotenoids, and also I'm going to move to the orbit view, which is a great way of looking at the uh, anatomy. Right, so we'll just do that now, switching to the orbit view. Now this is a fantastic way of teaching and learning airway anatomy, because you get this lovely lateral view and it's in real time. So you can see my bronchoscope and already you can see the path that the bronchoscope has taken. It's in a curved upward directing curve. And if I kept on pushing, I'm gonna hit on the anterior wall of the airway. So when I direct my tip at this point, I want to uh, push my lever up and that straightens out the tip. I'm now going to go through the vocal cords. I'll go back now to my anatomical view. Right, 
Right, so here we are heading for, and I have to straighten out my tip, otherwise I will impinge. And when I go through the vocal cords, um, anteriorly there is the in, in, internal view of the cricoid ring. And it's quite a prominent cartilage and it's quite easy for the bronchoscope or the following tracheal tube to get hung up on that part of the anatomy. So it's important to straighten out your tip, which I've done now, in order to travel on down un unimpaired down the trachea. Now, we all know babies are smaller than adults and this trachea in a newborn is probably only about five centimeters long. We can see features of the anatomy on the floor of the trachea. We see strii and that's from tracheatus muscle and it does tend to bulge uh, upwards slightly. And you'll notice also some transmitted movements from extrinsic compression by blood vessels, and you'll see characteristic breathing. The roof of the trachea is formed by tracheal rings, and there's a number, number of those, and of course, they're designed to hold the trachea open for breathing, unlike the esophagus, which is collapsed. So I'm moving down the trachea towards the distal end, and coming into view is the carina. That's where the airway divides into two parts, uh, one uh, feeding each lung. So I'm going to turn my tip and move into the right upper lobe by bringing my tip up. And if I turn to about two o'clock, I will be able to move up into the right upper lobe. And there we see the three segments of the right upper lobe. And you'll see in the bottom right corner off the screen of the anatomy, two little models, one um, AP and one lateral. And you'll see a very small little green crosshatch that shows the position of the tip of the bronchoscope. So I'm going to come out of the upper lobe, move into bronchus intermedius, travel further down the trachea. And you see now I'm in the orbit view. We get a beautiful view of anatomy. and here is the right middle lobe, and that has lateral and medial segments. Then further down into the distal segment, superior segment, and, and several other distal uh, segments of the right lung. So that's a very good overview of airway anatomy, as well as upper airway. We can do a complete bronchoscopy in this baby if we wish to. So I'm now going to withdraw the bronchoscope. And at the end, you get a score. Uh, that's a low score for me because I took a lot of time uh, giving a commentary, but normally you'd move a bit faster. But it also, the score depends on the amount of time I took and the number of, a, of collisions. Uh, and it gives you a cumulative score. Everything I've done was being recorded. And if I wish, I can play it back. That's great for teaching you can as if you're the tutor you can review what your students done and play back and um, critique what happened.